What's up guys, Evil Deer here. So today we're going to be playing Left 4 Dead 2 again. Um, hopefully I'm going to be continuing off from where we actually left off. If you haven't seen the first episode, I recommend you go watch that first because I'm going to be referencing words I've taught already in that. So you want to start at the beginning. Otherwise you can just start here if you're already a good speaker. So I guess we'll start off with a little bit of revision. So what was the word for um, health pack, for instance, in Esperanto? It was... Sanigillo, okay. Oh, what is this? Why have we got a timer? I don't remember this. Okay, what was the word for uh, shotgun? It was Caratocha Fusillo. Caratocha Fusillo. And let's just try one more revision. What was the word for um, that zombie that kind of like charged and ran and hit you? That was Kuratakulo. Kuratakulo. Okay, I know as soon as I set off this radio I guess the word for radio in Esperanto is radio um, there's gonna be like millions of angry zombies coming and running and it's gonna be lots of fun and probably die but let's do it <laughs> okay get ready now. so we've just got to protect this area I guess it's just me and a bunch of other random peoples uh, not even actual real peoples it's just yeah characters or whatever you want to call them so I guess what I'm gonna I'm just gonna teach a few words in this lesson that get conf like English speakers get confused because um, for instance they sound similar or uh, we we have one word for that which Esperanto has two words for. So first up I'm going to talk about the word spit. Okay, probably not the best choice to start with, but that's what I'm going to start with. So oh get out of my face, get out of my face. The word for spit, there's actually two words for spit in Esperanto, okay? So we have karachi and sputi. Now karachi is your standard, you know, country bunkin style spit which is like type of thing. Hey mate, you know, what are you doing type of thing. Oh the tank is here. Tankulo estos chichi here. But the other word is sputi and sputi is like a spit as in like the spit up blood and mucus and you know, all that good jazz. Um, and that's what a zombie would do. It would sputty. It wouldn't like karachi. It would sputty. It would sputty all over you. Yeah, that sounds like a really vile act. But anyway, anyway, back into the game. So, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, the confusion between trinki and drinki. Now, I jump into a lot of like, um, what I should call, like little chat rooms for learners of the language. And every now and then I see them make this this common mistake and the common mistake is drinky and trinky so trinky means to drink as in like drink coffee drink tea drink urine yeah if you're that way inclined but drinky means to drink alcohol and it's purely for alcohol and it's usually got like an associated you know you're gonna get drunk type of thing to it so yeah just so you know the difference drinky is alcohol trinky is everything else Oh my god, you see that zombie there, that green one? Yeah, he's he does a lot of um, sputi. Limutes putas. Get out of my face! God, these guys are persistent as today. Oh, why? Not Raidulo. Okay, I'm probably going to die because my entire team's down. But that's cool, that's cool. I enjoy the, the stress of this. Okay, and the other one, like another really, really common mistake that I see is the use of to try. Now, in English, we have one word to try, but in Espano, we have, there's three common ones, okay? There's penny, clopodi, and provi, okay? Now, in most instances, you'll use penny, but in order to understand when to use them, I'll actually, like, talk about the other two first. So, hey, some guns here. Uh, let me just check that I've got my gun. I've got my, my machine puffillo. Uh, is there anything else I need? No, I should be fine. Um, so yeah, you got Provi, Klopodi, and Penny. So Provi probably is the easiest one to explain. If you want to try something out and see the result, that there is Provi. So for example, actually I'm going to use this bombo. For example, let's say you brought a new chair. 
it's such a beautiful chair. It's got like little gold frilling on it, and it's quite comfortable. You know, it's the type of chair that your dog always steals, and you feel guilty for kicking it off because it gives you those big puppy eyes. So you've got this chair, and you want to try it out in the corner of the room, but you're not sure of the result, but you're interested in seeing. So that's when you'd use Provi. Or, for instance, there's another time when you'd use Provi. is like you want to try out something new, okay, that you haven't tried before. Um, you just want to see the result. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that's Provi. So in with Provi, you're pretty much looking to see the result. That's the objective. Okay. Now you've got Klopoti, and Klopoti means to endeavor to. So, and endeavor to is like um, work to, like you you place out steps, you plan out steps to make something happen. So for instance, you got a big project at work, um, and you really want to. You really wanted to get working, like, to get working, that sounds terrible. God, my English is awful when I'm under attack from zombies. Oh. So, you've got a big project, and you want to put steps in place to make it happen. So you endeavor to make it happen. So that there is Klopoti. And for all other situations, pretty much, you'd use Penny. Like this Tankulo, right now, he isn't Provi. He doesn't want to Provi Moritigimin. He, Klopodas Moritigimin. Oh my god, everyone just got puked on but me. By the way, there's a verb for you. Um, vomi. So, vomi is like um, to vomit or to puke, just just so you know. Okay, another one that I see people mix up a lot is uh, Tegmento and Plafono. Okay, so Tegmento means um, like the roof of the house, while Plafono is what the what is that green stuff? Okay, plafono means the ceiling of a house, or the ceiling of a room, that's probably the best way to explain it. So, tegmentos on top of a house, plafono is the ceiling inside the roof. Because I've seen recently a few people mix that one up. Oh yes, take that langulo, you've gone, oh Jesus, tangulo, he wants to kill me again. Oh, oh damn it. Out of my face! By the way, the word for face in Esperanto is visajo. Visajo. You'll, you'll probably need to know that one when you're gaming. That and along with fuck you. Actually, that there is something you'll definitely need to know when gaming, okay? Now, I probably should have like beeped that out before I said it, but if you don't like swearing, just ignore this next random little bit that I'm about to teach you, or just close the video, because I'm about to swear a lot. Swearing is a crucial component of every gaming experience. If you're not swearing, then you're not doing something right, okay? Ooh, we beat our record. So yeah. Ah, oh, someone's healing me. Ah, die! Die! Yes! <laughs> so in this case, for instance, when this guy just tried to eat me with his tongue type thing, you would say, um, basically, fuck you, zombie, okay? And the way to say that in Espana would be, fekalti zombio. Now, in Esperanto, to say fuck, it's actually ficky, but that's like in the physical, like, me and, you know, that lady that I imagine get it on type of thing. In Esperanto, to say fuck, as in like the swear word sense, we don't use ficky, we use feck, or fecky, I should say. Um, I don't know why that is, it's just, it's just is, okay? So, whoa my god, they're everywhere, they're freaking everywhere! Fekalti, there you go. Perfect example of it in you. Swap fekalti. Fekalti chui. So, fek, have you noticed I'm not saying fek or alti? That's because in Esperanto you can drop the O on a noun. That's kind of like something that's used in poetry and stuff like that. But also in swearing, it's quite common to kind of, I forget the technical term for it, but to drop the O at the end of a, a noun. Um, Al means two. And T is a pronoun that probably most of you, unless you've been speaking Esperanto for a while, haven't heard of. Look at these guys, they're just smashing them in the head. That is cool, man. That is seriously cool. So T means you, but singular. And the only other spot you'll Where see, apart you? from random swear words, I might give this Gold stage one more go, see if I can beat my record, is pretty much in the Bible. That's the only other spot you're going to see it. So Fekal T is the, the usual way of saying, fuck you. So, I expect from now on each of you to at least use that once a day in order to become fluent at it.
Okay, and for instance, like, <laughs> I use it a lot at work because I don't want to use actual swear words. I'm not even ready yet, but I'm just going to press this. Um, I use it a lot at work. I'll be sitting there and I'll be fixing something and I'll, you know, I'll get my fingers stuck in something. Not like stuck in that type of something, just like, because I fix computers and, you know, I cut myself all the time. Um, so I'll often say Feck LT and then my boss who has passively learned Esperanto through direct method will tell me not to swear so it doesn't really work in my situation. But it, it probably doesn't help that he watches my YouTube videos every now and then either. Um, so yeah, that that's my practice using it. So yeah, I expect all of you to start using it from now on. So Feck LT. Now let's have a look. You know what? While we're on the, the whole swearing slang thing, let's let's move it along. Let's learn some slang. Yeah. Woo! Now you all know from my previous instruction that trinki means to drink. Okay. So how do you think you would say to piss? Well, you could be all technical and say urini, or you could say the slang version pissy, but there's even a cooler way for those who are just new to Espana and saying it. You can say mal trinki, and mal trinki literally means undrink. That's right, you heard me, mal trinki, and it's very common amongst young Esperanto speakers, I'll say, ah, mi iros a la por mal trinki. So, that there is some serious bula, you know, Bula. That's, did you know that Bula is actually the way of saying like hello in Fiji? When you, when I went to Fiji just recently, um, literally when you get to the airport, you got all these Fijians. They're like Bula type of thing, and the whole trip, all you hear everywhere is Bula, 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 because it's like it, Fiji is just an island for tourism and like just resorts basically. So you continually hear that word. And by the time you go, it's engraved in the back of your skull. But anyway. Off topic, a little bit of a segue there, let's get back on topic. Some dude randomly Facebook messaging me on my iPhone at the moment going, Wait dude, why don't you talk to me anymore, don't you like me? Um, again segue, back on topic, Jesus, I gotta stop doing that. So we are talking about Esperanto slang, so mal trinki basically means undrink or to piss. And if you extend that thought process, you can also say mal manji. Now that one is used... However, it can have two possible meanings, and both are used in the Esperanto community. Mal manji obviously means to uneat. If you haven't learned manji, it means to eat. So that could either mean to vomit, which is vomi, or it could mean feki, which is, you know, to do your number two business. So yeah. If you want to be not so rude and also use a little bit of slang, you can say mal trinki and mal ah faculty, but I do lo. You can say mal trinki. So there you go. You've learned some Esperanto slang. Don't let anyone ever tell you that there's no such thing as Esperanto slang because there's actually lots of it. Like another thing, you guys, you'll probably get acquainted to this as you learn the language more. There is a lot of slang that are based that's based around reptiles. Now that probably sounds really weird to you guys if you're just learning the language. You're like, what do you mean based around reptiles? What have Esperanto got to do with reptiles, man? Let me just give you a little bit of information about that, okay? There, the word for crocodile is crocodilo, okay? Oh god, we have a tongue word just there. Crocodilo. And when, when you have two Esperantists meet, and actually not two, it's usually more than that, when you have a group of Esperantists meet, and they're chatting away, and one dude decides to use his national language when everyone can speak Esperanto, usually the more hardcore Esperantists, they'll be like, uh, ne crocodilu, which means basically, don't speak your native tongue when Esperanto is, um, when, it, you, when you should be using Esperanto. So that there is Esperanto slang, through and through, that you won't see that in any other language. Now, you remember how before I said that um, Esperanto has a lot of slang based around reptiles? Well, no one knows where that crocodili thing came from. It's just kind of always been in Esperanto. But um, you've also got ones for like alligatori, which is like um, I, I can't remember. I can't remember honestly. There's there's one for like every single freaking reptile that swims in the water slang, and I don't use most of them. To be honest, most people don't use them either. Um, but yeah, just just so you know, okay, go to Wikipedia and look up um, crocodili, okay, and you'll see. 
there should be like a list of all the different reptile slang that exists in Esperanto. It's completely random. And sorry, you have to search in Esperanto Wikipedia to see this. Anyway, I've reached the end of my game. Um, I've played enough, I've shot enough zombies, and I've died enough times. And I, I reckon I've probably teach, taught you guys enough words for one day to blow your minds and introduce you a little bit to the Esperanto culture and a little bit of slang. I wasn't planning to go there, but it just kind of happened. So anyway, if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. That lets me know that this is the type of content you guys are interested in. Share it with your friends. That brings new people on board and possibly new Esperanto speakers for us to all near with. I don't know what I want to say for us to talk with, I suppose. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And I will love you long time for it. No, no, just subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next video. And if not, feck old see.